Congratulations. I mean, your defense in the last four and a half minutes seemed to be the story. Just kind of talk about how you how you put this one away at the end. On mute. On I think mute. we're having a little trouble here at bus. He might be on mute in there. I, I, Chuck, I think, you know, the big key was when that thing was 61-62, we did a really good job of um, locking in defensively, being a little bit more disciplined, uh, being solid. Um, that, you know, Florida can really, really score the basketball. And I thought, you know, we had good transition defense, um, you know, holding them to six fast break points. But down the stretch, you're right, Chuck, I thought our pick and roll coverage got a little bit better. And then Jalen Williams did a phenomenal job on, uh, on, on number 12, Colin Castleton. Florida's four for uh, four for twenty one from three point range. Uh, you you really challenged them at the three point line tonight. It seemed Locke and the others seem to have hands in their faces all night. Yeah, well, after the last two games, three point shooting, we made a little adjustment. Um, had some defensive drills to try to contest the three, Chuck, because obviously, I mean, the game plan. I said it that it really wasn't on the guys um, at Missouri or or at Kentucky. The three point shooting that we gave up tonight was going to be on them if they gave up the three. So we re really wanted to run, um, you know, Noah Locke, number 10. You know, we could, he got one for five. Um, Appleby was one of seven. You know, the goal was to hold those two guys under three, three balls. We obviously did that with two. Um, and then we handled their pressure. They do a good job of changing things up. Full court, man to man, three quarters court, um, one, three, one. I thought we did a great job recognizing all that. Uh, especially in the first half when I think we only had three or four turnovers. In the second half when they made the run, we got a little bit too loose with the ball. Um, but then I thought we settled down in the stretch. And we all know in these games there's going to be three runs, and we controlled two of the three, and they made their run there, and then we, we buckled down, like you mentioned, Chuck, the last four minutes. You kind of touched on it there, but I want to go back to guard play. It just seemed like that was an area all night long where – your team was a little more certain of their steps maybe than the other side. You look at the point production, you look at the defense, it just seemed like your guards really had a good night. Yeah, they did. I mean, you, you know, you look at Tate scoring and you look at Debo scoring. Um, Debo had 18, which is phenomenal for a freshman and a guy who just kind of gets his stuff right off, off uh, creating it himself. And then Tate goes six of 10. But those two guys defensively, I mean, Trey Mann is a really good basketball player, and he goes three for 11. Um, and then I thought, you know, because Moody was was on Noah Locke a lot, he held him to two of nine. I thought our guard play defensively was, was really good. It's a pretty high-volume free throw attempt team. We did a good job not fouling too much, and, and Florida did a great job going 14 of 14 from the foul line. But, um, look, they're a great rebounding team. We beat them on the glass. Uh, they had more turnovers than we did. I was really proud of how we played. I mean, um, again, not to not to fold. Once they went up one and made and made a pretty good run, uh, we did a great job of of being mature and handling the game and finishing the game the right way. You talked on the pregame show about the importance of all the things, ball fakes, all the things you've got to do when you go against a good shot blocking team. They blocked six shots tonight, but it never seemed like rim protection or or, or, or or keeping from going keeping you from going to the rim was was something they were able to accomplish no we wanted to attack the rim as much as possible and i mean they had six blocks we had five um you know but um you know all the pressure they had they had nine steals we had nine justin smith had five steals alone so i thought just our activity on both sides of the ball was good we still probably missed too many layups um, but we will continue to work on that, but we want to continue to attack the rim as much as we possibly can. You've had three straight wins now that have been decided, so to speak, right down the stretch. I just wonder about the confidence level for a basketball team winning close, big games and doing what you have to do at the end to find a way to get out of there. No, I certainly think it helps us moving forward for sure. We know, Chuck, that you know, so many games in this conference come down in the last three minutes of the game, and it's important to execute on both sides of the basketball. So I think certainly, you know, playing the majority of the season without many close games um, and a lot of people talking about our non-conference and we didn't have close games and would we be able to finish and all that happy, you know what, we've done a really good job um, of finishing when we've been in those situations. 
Hey, 17 and 5, 9 and 4, seven straight wins. That that kind of speaks for itself right there, coach. No, I congratulations. You. Thanks, Chuck. Appreciate it. 38 minutes we had the lead. We'll take it. All right. There you go. Eric Musselman in the wake of Bob Holt, you're up. Is K Wood in there? Sorry, I, I, I didn't hear anything. Um, Aaron, <laughs> uh, you know, Florida had erased a 15 point lead, took the one point lead, seemed to have the momentum, and you guys pushed it right back in their face. You know, Devo got that drive. Just um, what, what was the key to not, you know, getting down when, when you have a big lead and then they, they seemingly take the momentum away, but if they had it, they had it for like, you know, a minute or something. Yeah, I mean, again, when we, you know, in a league game, when, when the opposition only has a lead for a minute 12, Bob, I think that the big thing is in the timeouts being composed, which the players are more composed than I am. Um, they do, they did a really good job of, of keeping their composure going out. I mean, the big thing was just not turning the ball over and us getting the shot on goal. I think at times we tried to rush the ball up the floor too much and they had some wolf steals from behind that, um, you know, that caught us off guard and, um, it was just about, you know, I thought we executed what we needed to do on both sides of the ball. I thought when they made the run for about a two and a half, three minute stretch, we just didn't defend at an elite level. We defended at a decent level, which you can't do against Florida. You have to defend at an elite, elite level. And I thought we got back to doing that after two or three minutes. And then what did you think of that drive Devo had? You know, pretty much went coast to coast to give you the lead back for good. And just what do you think of his game overall? I'm phenomenal. I mean, he keeps getting better and better every game. I mean, his his shot selection's good. Um, he's not turning the ball over. The guys love playing with him. Um, defensively, he's a menace. He's all over the place. He gets loose balls. He rebounds his position. He had five rebounds tonight. Um, he and Jalen, I mean, for for freshmen, they they just keep getting better. How, how about that drive? He he went coast to coast to give you the lead back. I mean, you know, you just kind of hold your breath when Devo's got the ball and he just kind of figures out a way to slither to the rim and get by people. And, and um, you know, it's, it's, it's not like I'm telling him to hold up. I, I mean, I don't know what he's going to do in there, but he's going to do something. Okay, I got a couple more, but I'll give it back to Mike. And sorry, I, I didn't hear my name called earlier. So You were only two seconds late, Bob. That's fine. It wasn't a five-second call. <laughs> Curtis. Hey, Coach, you take a look at the box score, and Justin Smith was all over it from the offensive side and the defensive side. I know you said that the Missouri game may have been his best in a Razorback uniform, but what did you think about his performance tonight? Uh, he's playing like a next-level player the last two games uh, on both sides of the basketball. I mean, you know, he, he, he came back a little early from the injury because he's a great teammate, um, and he really cares about winning. Um, probably wasn't fully healthy. I'm not, not probably he wasn't fully healthy. Um, he was cleared to play, but I think the last two games now he's been able to get back and practice with us. And I think, you know, I mentioned after the last game, it was the first game that he, he didn't have pain, didn't have much swelling. Um, but he's playing, you know, like we thought he would be capable of. He's, he's a dominant player right now in the sec on both sides of the ball, not just one. I mean, he, He's making defensive steals. He's getting deflections. He's posting up on our, our Charlotte play and reading the defense. And uh, he's playing off the off the charts right now with this. You know, when he plays with such incredible effort and energy, I mean, there's not many guys that have his speed, quickness, and strength all in a combination. Um, and he's able to play this way because he's fully healthy again. Scotty. Hey, Coach, I wanted to get your thoughts on Jalen Tate's impact. He had his jumper working a little bit tonight, and he had a really big one, I think, to extend the lead to three. They came up with a couple steals tonight, just kind of his overarching impact on the game. Yeah, Scotty, I think the biggest thing is we all saw when he was out of the game how much we missed him. Uh, we missed him, you know, tremendously when he was out for a short stretch and because he picked up fouls, um, you know, and I wanted to have him available down the stretch. Um, you know, we've got to continue to work. Um, when he's out of the game for us, which we, which we'll, we'll, we'll do start doing, you know, as we get ready for our next game. 
And then you mentioned Jalen Williams on on Castleton. It looked like he kind of relished that matchup a little bit. What did what did he do to to kind of frustrate him and some of you know Florida's other front line guys? I think he made it difficult, um, you know, for number twelve Colin Castleton to catch the ball in his scoring area. We wanted him to try to catch the ball out on the floor a little bit or two steps off the post. I thought he did a good job dislodging him um, and, and kind of crab walking him off his off his spots. Um, Because if you can make a post player catch that thing two or three spots away. And then I thought, I mean, that one dig um, in the post when Justin Smith went down there and and picked picked the ball off uh, was really big as well. Because when a big guy catches it in there and he's got people um, digging and and with foot and hands and voice, it may, you know, kind of freezes the post up player slightly. And I thought uh, Justin's dig off their four man was was really big helping. Uh, Jalen as well in the post defense. Coach? Yeah, Coach, it seemed like y'all got off to a, a better start offensively from the jump than you have in a while. Do you know what they're, what the key to that was? Just talking about it and then recognizing, Hutch, that we stunk starting some of the games. Um, you know, at the end of the day, I mean, you, you, you know, you just want to win the game. But, yeah, Hutch, I mean, it was something that – I mean, the guys know, you know, and, and we – uh we ran two new plays tonight. I thought it got us some really good looks throughout the course of the game. And, you know, it's our job as a staff just to try to try to, you know, put together a plan for them to get open looks. And if they're not getting open looks, then, then it's on our coaching staff to, to come up with a, you know, a new wrinkle that maybe the opposition hasn't seen. And then it's up to the guys to read it. And um, even in our open offense, which is our five man passing game, I thought our cutting was really, really big time. Randy? Eric, the combination of Justin Smith, 37 minutes, Devo Davis, 36 minutes, uh, Moses Moody, 37 minutes, obviously tells you the impact that these play, these three players have on uh, the performance of your team. Talk about their play as a unit. Yeah, I think durability. Um, working hard in practice, being in great shape, because guys can't play that type of minutes if they're not in elite physical condition. Um, you know, and it's no secret that I like to play guys that are rolling. I like to play them a lot of minutes. And, and um, you know, it was hard for me to take those guys off the floor. Um, when the opposition makes a run, a lot of coaches will, you know, will tinker with substitution. But um, certain guys, you know, I'll sink and swim with and, and um, that same group that kind of got discombobulated for two or three minutes, dug themselves out of it as well. So um, those guys are so vital because they play both sides of the ball for us, Randy. One other question, Eric, um, the play of Jalen Williams tonight, four points, two of two from the free throw line, 10 rebounds. I had him with one block. They don't show a block, at least on my stat sheet. Uh, talk about the overall play of Jalen Williams. Phenomenal. I mean, like we talked about his post defense, Randy, but, you know, for him to go in there and lead us in rebounds, I mean, he had four more rebounds than anybody else on the roster for us. You know, you look at Florida's, re, you know, leading rebounders and, and uh, he had two more rebounds than anybody in, on Florida's team, um, you know, and he did all that in 23 minutes. So uh, he's a, he's an incredible aggressive uh, defensive rebounder, which, which is the key to any defensive team is how well they can defensive rebound. And, and the big thing is he's just physical. Like he enjoys getting in there and banging around. Um, some guys don't like contact. He seeks contact. Bob, final question. Yeah, er, Eric, you know, some teams get ranked and, and then they lose. You know, I mean, last time I was ranked, they lost two games that next week. Um, how big is that to defend the ranking, especially against a team that, was 16 and two against starting saw since 2009. Wow, that's not a real good record. Um, no, it's not. <laughs> no, I, I think our guys, um, they understood like they, you know, I, I heard from a little bird that they have their own group chat and they were even talking about, hey, let's come to practice ready. You know, I think the guys right now, they understand I, I, again for, for having four freshmen on your roster and, and so many new faces. Like, I think this group understood going into this game, like we didn't want to be ranked and then, and then lose the next game. Um, and I talked to them and told them, you know, 
at Nevada, that that happened to us in 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 I don't know if it was year I think it must have been year two or three whatever you know and, and we'd get in we you know we'd we'd lose we'd get out we'd come back win three you know and I said hey let's just worry about playing one game don't worry about the rankings just come in be as focused as you can worry about the next forty minutes don't listen to anything outside um, our own locker room the rankings are great. You know, we're proud of that, but move on and just figure out a way to beat Florida. Now our focus has to turn to Texas A&M, and that's the only thing we really need to worry about. Thanks. Thanks, Coach Buck. Appreciate you.